Welcome back to the podcast. I don't think this man needs an in your introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is Keemstar. He is the number one news source on, on all social media for, for anything entertainment. And I mean, I, I don't know how we got here, but today he's on the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing... I think it goes without saying I'm doing fantastic right now. I'm doing fantastic. I just, I just got done playing a game of Rocket League and it went into overtime and I whooped <laughs> this dude's ass so bad. I was bumping the ever... Dude, I was trolling this other team so bad I just kept hitting them and demoing them over and over and over again and they were getting frustrated. <laughs> Balls going towards the net. Goalies flying through the air. I flew <laughs> through the air and knocked him in the air into the goal and the ball followed us. It was awesome. So I'm coming off of a big high and a big yeah, win. That was, the, that was probably one of the funniest DMs I could have gotten the situation was uh, let me finish up this Rocket League game by you i loved it. it it gave me a good sigh of relief i do i don't typically get super nervous but like it, it i can't not have those nerves right now you know and i'm not gonna hide the fact that i have the nerves but like this is a big deal this is a big deal for me so uh i mean we're gonna have a good conversation today great great i'm super excited <clears throat> um you you play you play some video games. What, what games you've been playing? Honestly, I don't get to play. You know, I'm so busy. You know, running all these companies and doing all this stuff. I don't get to play video games as much as uh, as I really want to. Uh, but I do play. Um, I do play a Rocket League almost every single day. Uh, that's my go-to. I think uh, Halo Three back in the day was like the game that I played every single day. Uh, Black Ops 2 is a game that I played every single day. You know, we, we go through these stages in life. We're on a game every single day for years. I'd say those three right there are, are probably uh, have taken up years of my life. Um, and also Rust. Rust, ever since that game was existed, I mean, it came out and it, it was a web browser game, right? It was just an experiment that they were doing over at Face Punch. And they hooked me up because I was famous or whatever with a with a free beta code. And so I've been playing that periodically um, since the game existed. And I, I only get a chance to play Rust uh, during winter, though, because it's like it consumes your life. It's mm -hmm. like it's one of those things that you constantly have to worry about somebody raiding your base or whatever. Um, so I only get to play that during the winter months. And I'll do like a... You, you'll notice, right? I won't be active on Twitter as much. I won't be, I won't be active anywhere as much. But I, I, I have a week's vacation that I take every single winter, and that is just to play Rust. My brother, I've seen, I've never seen a game consume anyone like Rust has consumed my brother. And I was yeah. gonna say to you, you were the first person that I ever heard about Rust from. I remember hearing about Rust way back when. And it was from you and you would say stuff i don't know if it would be in like your videos or whatever you would definitely say stuff on twitter and stuff but i don't want to waste um a, a bunch of time explaining uh you know rust in detail but yeah. for those of you that know what rust is and, and play rust i mean rust is a, a mere image of what it's like to uh you know i guess be a hustler to to go out there get your bread up to win you know what i mean yeah and then once once you get it then you got to hold on to it or you could even compare it to like social media right once you get the followers once you get the fame then you got to hold on to it like mm -hmm. don't let somebody steal that from you right uh that's kind of what like rust is in a very primitive sense and uh i absolutely love it for that reason yeah i i'm it's it's really cool to see because like i remember hearing about it and then it was literally just from you. I didn't hear about it from anyone else. And then then it kind of exploded in a way. And I don't know. I always thought you you were like the dev of it or like you had stake in it and somehow because I thought you ha were helping. That's why you're promoting it so much. But nah, it's going. just a good game. It's just a good game. I'm, in I'm interested to hear like going back to the start of Drama Alert, what what has changed? Were you a you were definitely like a one man show back then, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, what what has changed? Like, how has that process changed from like? Because you were covering more niche Call of Duty. Uh, I mean, obviously there was some outside, but pretty much like 
Call of Duty, it kind of got, there was a point where a lot of Minecraft stuff was happening with, with everything going on. But like, mm -hmm. what, what has changed in that aspect? Like how many, how many people do you have helping you right now? Um, so like when I started, it was just me. Right. And yeah. I was covering one community that, you know, that's all I was tracking. Right. Is pretty much the Call of Duty stuff. And, you know, it was amazing back then because we're talking like the end of 2012, 13 and 14 within those years, it was literally, literally just Call of Duty esports drama and Call of Duty drama from Call of Duty commentators. And you could see it all on Twitter. And those were back in the day where every single day people were fighting back and forth on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But the YouTube fans, the subscribers didn't know that all this shit was happening on Twitter. They had no idea. So I brought that from Twitter uh, into video platform, uh, into video form and for entertainment. And it was just absolutely awesome. But, um, once we started expanding to like the prank channels and some other things that were going on in the community, um, you know, I just needed help. Like I needed to build a team. And so there were uh, a couple loyal, loyal, uh, you know, fans of mine that were constantly sending me news. I'm like, fuck it. Let me just hire them. Right. Uh, so I brought like, I think at one point the team was really big and there was like maybe even 10 people on the team just throwing news in a chat at that time. I think they were just helping out, right? Like it was just fans. Like it was a fan group that they were helping with the news. I don't even think they were employees. Um, and then, uh, of course, 2015, uh, you know, I gave a leadership role to, to someone. I put them in charge of vetting information. 2015, we had the biggest F up of drum Lord's career where, you know, the old man Keemstar made old man cry and stuff. And that's when I was like, dude, I got to take this serious. I got to, I got to vet this stuff myself. Um, and kind of got rid of almost everybody and kept two trusted people. And so I've had two or three employees uh, working for me, just gathering the news and whatnot um, since then. And those people have shifted in and out from time to time. But yeah, I always have like uh, two people that are getting news and then like one person that's, you know, um, just has a little bit bigger role. And right now that's Gino. Gino runs the website. He runs the news team. Um, you know, I got a guy named Alex. He's uh, helps with the graphics stuff, but he also runs Happy Punch uh, Instagram and whatnot. And uh, Luke and I it, see we we moved into Snapchat as well. So we brought on this guy named Fuji, where he takes my drum alert videos, edits them for Snapchat and stuff like that. So I got I got a little bit of a team right now. I have uh, one, two, three. I, right now I have four employees for drum alert, technically. Yeah, I think it's super like when it comes to your process of actually doing it could you is there take us through that process of like from from that first idea that there's going to be stories and that you need to make a video then like you're getting the information so you, how how fast is that from from start recording to, to edit uh, all the way up so, on YouTube. So, you know, drama alert used to be every single day. Mm -hmm. Like you, you remember like yeah. every 2016, 2015, 2017, 18, you know, even parts of 19, it, it was every day. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're at a point now where like, you know, creators are running around like commercials, right? They're not themselves anymore. There's no authentic people anymore. If someone gets mad, they don't, you know, call someone a stupid reject and just go off on them like we would normally do. I mean, that's when you when you're pissed at someone, you fucking yell at them, you call them fucking names. People don't do that anymore. You know, everyone's walking around as a, a, a commercial, a, a fake avatar as themselves so they can make as much money on the platform. So because of that, uh, drama is at an all time low. People are not giving out their real opinions or their real thoughts because they're afraid of backlash and afraid of being canceled and so th there, there's way less news. So what I have is I have um, four different group chats. One of them is for minor stories like uh, Mr. Beast uh, 
basically uh, tipped off that he has a chocolate river in his chocolate factory. That'd be like a minor story. Mm -hmm. This Ackman story versus Quantum TV and all the stuff and him getting banned. That's a big story. That would go in major news category. And then I have a funny news category. And then I have a... Um, uh, a boxing, social media boxing category. And so my guys will gather news uh, throughout the day. They go on for a couple hours, see what the hell is going on. And they put them in these different chats. I go through the chats. I pick the stories that I want to cover on Drama Alert. That usually takes like mm, maybe two hours. Like I try to give myself a good two hours to go through the stuff. And then what I do is I take the screenshots or whatever the assets are from the stories. And I throw them up on my laptop and I put them in order and I try to figure out like uh, musically, like how these things fit, like a symphony, like I'll go from that story and this story and that story. Um, and then once I have all that up on my laptop, it's like rows of, of pictures, right? <laughs> it's just rows of pictures on my laptop. That's how it's set up. I hit record and I just start talking. Um, and then I'll, uh, it usually, t I usually record about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes and then i'll edit that down to about 12 minutes um in sony vegas i still do it in sony vegas i still do all my own editing and then i then i just publish it to youtube and so the editing process usually takes me like an hour an hour and a half something like that i just get real I'm so locked in when I have other people edit drama alert, um, it takes them like four hours or something. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm so locked in. Like I'm like, bam, 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 bam. I, I, I run like a madman on the editing machine. That's why I make so many mistakes, but. <laughs> was it always the, like coming from the start, was that always your goal is to like, did you have this idea that it was scalable to this, to this end? Cause like being in a oh. niche, yeah, being in a niche community, like, I don't know if you were thinking that it was only going to be Call of Duty forever or whatever, but it's, it's, I've always, I've always done everything, um, you know, as far as content wise, because I wanted to, right. You know, it wasn't like a business decision. So, yeah. you know, I started making like trolling content and, and whatnot, uh, like on YouTube back in, you know, 2009, I started earlier, found so much success that I was able to like quit my job at the um, attorney's office and just kind of like do this and call people horrible names in video games. Like that was my career yeah. <laughs> and mess with them and prank them. Um, and then, um, you know, at the same time of doing this for love, I also have, I guess, a somewhat of a business brain. Uh, I promoted a, a Minecraft clone game uh, that was coming to the consoles, Xbox 360 before Minecraft was on Xbox 360. And um, after the success of that, I was independently wealthy. Um, but I didn't know what I wanted to do in my career because, mm -hmm. you know, and thank God at that time, I was able to buy some Bitcoin at $7.50 and just make some smart moves. Um, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with a, for, for a career. I had no idea. There was this HBO show called Newsroom. And I've always religiously watched the news. The Watching the news back in the day was awesome because they would actually cover news. Now it's all political bullshit, right? It's like <laughs> propaganda. Like it, there's no news anymore. Uh, but back then you could you could watch cable news and it wasn't all political stuff. It was actually news stories. I loved it. And um, this show Newsroom came on in HBO. It was so good. It was so into it. And when I watch a series, like if I'm watching Game of Thrones, like I feel like I'm in Game of Thrones. Whatever I'm watching, I get in into character um so i was watching newsroom got obsessed with it these people were you call of duty people are fighting back and forth so i started shout casting it on twitter <laughs> right <laughs> and uh someone goes you need to make a hashtag and i was like okay hashtag drama alert and uh one day i decided i should make a video on this so i can explain this and that just went nuts right um so no i didn't i didn't set out to uh to make a news uh empire or, you know or a news brand like that i set out to have fun on the internet you know talk about people talking crap back and forth um and it just turned into what it turned into yeah when when thinking about like how, how you where you want to go like We've talked about the like where you thought it was gonna go. Where do you want it to go? Like, do you want do you want to be this 
like you want to leave and like kind of be on the outside and have like have other people doing it or is it is it gonna die when you don't love it and you stop wanting to do it? I want to find somebody that absolutely loves this that can like kind of take over Drumler, uh and let them run it or sell it to a company that I think would, um, you know, do justice to Drumler because, you know, I don't have a passion like I used to for it. Right. Mm, of you know, it's and it's like everything. Right. You know, I, some fans might be sad by me saying that, but it's like when you're doing something when you're doing something and you're learning it and you're trying to figure out that curiosity makes it like so much fun, right? Mm -hmm. The curiosity of how, how can I do this better? How can I do this? Like I'm, I've exhausted that on drum alert. Like I feel like when I make a video, every one of them is like almost perfect now. Um, to the point where sometimes I slack and like literally don't try as hard as I can because I feel like I've mastered this. Right. I'm ready for a new task. I'm ready to do something else, you know, um, like the, the gaming events, right? Like doing the gaming events was so much fun. Friday, Fortnite, Minecraft, Monday, stuff like that. They're Being huge. able to pull, um, more viewers than the actual esports uh, events and making everybody in esports hate my guts. Cause I was just like stealing their shit, um, stealing their clout. Like I didn't actually steal any of their stuff. I just was doing a better job than them. Stuff like that. Like I got that big W and I'm really good at like organizing that and putting that together. But now it's like, I, I accomplished that. I don't really have the drive to make another gaming event. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I want to do other things. And because, you know, drum alert, um, you know, has, has a fan base of 5 million subscribers, 3 million subscribers on, um, on, uh, snapchat pulling millions and millions of views on snapchat youtube's kind of dead like i i don't know what's going on with that but um because i have these people that depend on me for the news i ha i feel like i have to right yeah <laughs> like i and uh i i want to i want to separate myself from drum alert because there's just so much other stuff i want to i want to do you know i would come out with a music album just to see how far I can take it. I would, I would, mm -hmm. I create an entire fucking album. Right. Um, and it, it's probably going to suck, but the next one's going to be better. And the next one's going to be better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I would, I want to do a million other fucking things. You know, the, the thing that makes, uh, any of us successful is curiosity and wanting to learn and wanting to figure out, you know, how far you can take something. And, uh, I'm constantly in that mode. I'm over here. Like, learning how to do drywall and you know gardening and i'm doing a million different fucking things right now i'm building boxing cards um that are going to be uh absolutely massive and take over the influencer boxing scene i got a boxing brand uh it's like um you know what phase clan is to gaming right yeah happy punch is the social media boxing like i'm building an entire brand and team and uh, you know, I'm just constantly trying to challenge myself with other things and drama is getting in the way, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, with, uh, with happy punch, I, I've, I've loved what you guys have done. I'm not always super into boxing, but there's one pickup that you guys have on your happy punch team is, uh, his name's Persa. And I, I absolutely love that guy. And I love his content. He's one of the, one of the best content creators that I, I've seen. Uh, yeah, but. we, um, we bought Purse's uh, company um, and um, we said, we really like what you're doing instead of hiring you for, you know, our channel, let's just, let's just buy your company. So we bought out his company and now he runs the happy punch YouTube channel and whatnot. Uh, and it's cool to just like, you know, give uh, some of these guys like opportunities like that. So that's the one thing I love about it. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's exactly what, that, that that's exactly what i loved about what you do is like no one else is tweeting out hey i got two hours let me come on some small creators podcast so like i got so many texts right when you sent me that is like like this is game changing and like but that's i've seen you do that many times um over the years is just help people out and that's great and i uh, props to you for that you know, I, I hate that, uh, 
You know, I, I know this sounds corny, right? Because I'm definitely not on Justin Bieber's level, right? <laughs> At all. All right. Yeah. But Justin Bieber has this one song called Lonely, right? Where he's talking about because he's so wildly successful, right? Because he's so famous, uh, he's secluded, right? It, he's lonely. He's fucking lonely because there's no one. Everybody wants something from him or whatever, right? Yeah, so he can't exactly. have real friends. He can't. That is not me. All right. I never want that to happen. I talk to everyone, a big or small, like people ask me all the time, like, why are you talking shit about this random person with 10 followers? I was like, cause he was talking shit to me. You didn't see him talking shit to me. Yeah. But you're big and da, da, da. I don't fucking, we're both humans, bro. He's talking shit to me. Yeah. I'm talking shit back. Yeah. Like, I just don't, I don't see it that way. And, um, you know, with all the controversies and, you know, drama and shit that I've had, like, throughout my career, I feel like I'm always going to have a fan base because, like, I just fucking say it how I think, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times people don't relate to what I'm saying, right? The, like, the because I'm, like, you know, I'm old, right? And uh, I come from a different time frame and than uh, this 2022 uh, Gen Z world. And this world is way different than a world that we lived in just a couple years ago, right? And uh, while the whole world is changing, um, I'm just being me and still saying what I really think when no one else is doing that. So, you know, it, it, some people love that and some people absolutely hate it. Yeah. Do you, do you feel anything about being in drama, like in the drama sphere, all the time do you think it like negatively affects your everyday life or can you have you known to separate like i'm gonna be in drama mode but then i have you know i'm gonna go hang out with my my kid and just like i'm okay like i'm not thinking i mean it's about pretty it. much like that like i'll make a twitter video just screaming out the top of my lungs like you're fucking this and da da da, da yeah. and fuck you for this and then i'll put the phone down and i'll be riding on an atv or hanging out <laughs> having dinner i'm not thinking about that at all and then i'll come back and look at the messages, get back on, make another video. And then I'm just right back to, you know, you, you have to, otherwise yeah. like, you know, and, um, you, you know, there's two things going on, you know, as much as I said, like, I'm saying what I really think and all that also, you know, I'm an entertainer. So you ham it up a little bit. So there is that element of that. So yeah, I, I don't know in my real life. Um, I'm, I'm constantly forgetting, uh, that I'm, Keemstar, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, there, there'll be every time I go out in public, I get recognized. And every time I'm shocked, like it, it hasn't, <laughs> I haven't gotten used to it. Like it's like literally every time uh, I went through the McDonald's last night and uh, this kid's staring at me. I'm like, can I help you? He's like, oh my God, it's fucking him. Can I get a son? And I'm just like, oh yeah, I, f I keep forgetting. You know, I just, I literally, I just forget. I don't know. What, what was the point where everything changed? Because into for me, you were always a far away, like unreachable entity in the space. But like, I want to know for you when things changed, um, like there, it was there a tipping point? And like, do you know, like what, like maybe there's a video or like what era that was where it was like, oh, this is, this is for real. Um, I, I don't really understand your question. Like with your content and like being like getting bigger, like was there a point where you it actually clicked in your brain that this is this is pretty big for me? Um, or maybe maybe it was the whole time it kind of just gradually so it didn't really click in your brain at all, or is there well, there is this there is this moment that I have um before i hit record um on the camera right like i'll set everything up i'll do the work and then right when i'm about to hit record it's like i i have this thought process that's like millions of people are about to hear what you have to say <laughs> and it's like it it like puts me back a little bit right like yeah um i actually haven't been having that feeling recently maybe i need to start having it again maybe i'll make my content better or something i don't know um but that that was a an ongoing thing that would happen when we started peaking uh, on YouTube, at least a million views every video, which I'd say that's like kind of like the 2016 um, around then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, this might be a, a 
maybe a hard question to, to think about, but do you have like a, what, what do you think was like your biggest consecutive news story? Like, do you have a, like the biggest one you can think of? I would say, well, there's two of them that come to the top of my head and they're old stories. Um, there was this group called Lizard Squad Hacking oh, Group yeah. and they took down um, PlayStation and they yep. took down Xbox Live, like the network. They Remember DDoSed that. it yep. uh, on Christmas. Yep. And so Kim.com offered them uh, a bunch of money to like stop the attacks and all that. And so... There was another hacking group that was like trying to attack them and expose that it was a whole ordeal and so i was interviewing lizard squad through this whole process right and i was covering all of this and um you know a day after christmas when this was now national news i interviewed lizard squad the other hacking group kim.com on drumler all together <laughs> <laughs> at the same time uh, so that was a huge, huge story that was like kind of ongoing. But I would say Bashiverse because the Bashiverse story just kept getting crazier and crazier and crazier. Um, you know, there were all these people online that didn't like the fact that I was like calling him out, and he was he was he was guilty. Like he was guilty of messing around with minors. There's an overwhelming amount of evidence against it, but because he was such a, so many people liked him, mm -hmm. right? He was able to continue this narrative that he's totally innocent and everyone's lying about him and then other youtubers that didn't like me would just say that as well so there's like this constant like battle even though i'm like he's he got arrested for this like here's the mug shot right yeah. here's the newspaper like he is guilty mm -hmm. um even though there was like undeniable proof um there was always this um kind of conversation back and forth and the story just kept getting crazier and crazier and crazier. The, his girlfriend got labeled as a gold digger because once he got too much heat on him, she left him. And it just, it, it was, it was absolutely nuts. It was insane. Mm -hmm. When, when stuff like big stories come out and you, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of times you try to reach out to the creator or whatever's happening. You, you try to reach out and like get a statement, right? What'd you say? Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Yeah, but how many? How how often are there things that you can't like that you promised you wouldn't say on the like? Is there a lot of times where you just know more that you can't say? Oh my god, that's like every week. Is that awful or what? <laughs> well, I mean, the only reason why I have the access that I have and I can talk to anybody about anything is because they know like whatever they tell me, uh, I ain't saying shit, you know, unless they give me permission to go yeah. on air with it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, when have you ever seen Keemstar secretly recording some YouTuber or, you know, leaking yeah. DM? Like, I don't do that, right? Absolutely. At the, 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 the reason why the mainstream media and traditional news outlets don't have access like I have is because they're not fucking YouTubers, they're not creators. They're not on the level of other creators. I am. I was yeah. actually fucking making videos and a content creator that had nothing to do with Drum Alert fucking a decade ago and and a lot of the creators that we see nowadays were fans of me when i was making gaming trolling videos right so it's like i'm on the same level uh with many of these creators and they grew up watching me and they know that i'm not gonna do them dirty so yeah uh that's that's always my thought was that like uh, i figured you knew a lot more than than you could say but i always felt like you never backstabbed anyone so well it's like imagine you're covering a story and you have a lot of stuff that you were told in private that you can't say yeah right you can't say it but anything public you can cover but now that you know the truth now you know what to look for so you can accurately cover the story yeah that's why drumler is right and then this guy is wrong or that guy is wrong and this guy is wrong. And you know, there's all these false narratives going around because I actually have the insider information. I just can't put that person on record and say why, but I can present a theory to my audience and give them evidence to support that theory, yeah. not proof evidence. And um, you know, a lot of my opinions that I have online in Twitter videos or on Drumler are based on me just having more knowledge than, 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 than the average person. Mm -hmm. Are you good if I asked you on some beef you got? Sure. What? What is... I've never understood the beef with 
uh, H3. I think that's the oh. big one. But you don't have to go through the entire thing, obviously. But... Uh, that, so that, that? that that guy started his podcast. Um, well, first of all, he was friends with Leafy. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he was friends with PewDiePie. He was friends with a lot, a lot of different creators. When he had an opportunity to dunk on Leafy, he took it, right? Because it was the number one thing on Reddit. Um, and so he, he kind of backstabbed Leafy. Uh, PewDiePie was the second person on his podcast. And then when PewDiePie said the N-word, you know, he backstab PewDiePie. Oh, that was so awful. That was this. And even though H3H3 was saying the N-word on his own podcast, I was the third person on his podcast, on the H3H3 podcast, and uh, went there, met him, was open, had a conversation like I'm having with you. Uh, they were very nice. They were lovely to me. We had a great conversation. Um, and when I left uh, and got home and was back here in Buffalo, New York, uh, the podcast went up and some people were mad that uh, they had me on the show because I'm a very controversial figure. They left a comment uh, on their uh, uh, on the video, which was on YouTube, and they said, I know some of you guys hate Keemstar. Don't worry. We hate him, too. And I was like, what the f I was just there. Mm -hmm. Tell me you hate me face to face. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just there. I was like – and so that kind of started a feud. But then H3H3, H3, he, um, he got sued. Um, and when he got sued, it was over him criticizing some guy's video and, you know, there's a whole issue with fair use and whatnot. And so Philip DeFranco started like a GoFundMe or whatever for H3H3 H3 to help him win the case. H3H3 uh -huh. H3 H3 weren't on the best of terms at this point, but, you know, I put my pride aside and did the right thing and donated $2,000 towards this thing to help, you know, him win this case. Uh, I even convinced Leafy, who was at war with Ethan, to donate $1,000. Um, so I really campaigned for people to win this thing for Ethan Klein because I thought it would be better for the website. Ethan uploaded a video to YouTube, and he basically said, Hey, look, guys, uh, we don't need all this money. You guys donated way too much money to us. So we're going to set up a fund called the FUPA Fund to help anybody with copyright issues, right? So they go through the court process, they win they win the lawsuit and all that. Congratulations. And then Fupa just disappears. And then Ethan's like, "Well, we had to use all the money for our th but that's not what you said. That's not what you said." And, you know, he got a um he got a uh, uh a skin in a game or something to make money for the lawsuit and all this other stuff and it's like Where's the money for everyone else that's that's going to court for copyright? And so I was criticizing him on that. And then he made a whole content nuke with lies and bullshit, you know, saying I killed YouTubers and just nothing. Nothing was right. Nothing was covered accurate. That Everything was taken out of context to make me look as bad as possible. And uh, it's been pretty much like that ever since. I mean, he's been going to YouTube and trying to, you know, in my opinion, trying to get my channel banned. He's been actively uploading videos saying, should we deplatform Keemstar? Over the course of the last three years, he's made a, at least 300 video or 200 videos, you know, mentioning me. Like the guy's fucking obsessed with me. He's absolutely obsessed with me. And anytime I respond or see one of these clips and, you know, respond to what he's doing, his stupid ass fans say I'm obsessed with him. So, I mean, that, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, and it's not just me. You know, this guy has, you know, you'll often see people online saying that the decline of Ethan Klein, you know, the guy has changed drastically. Mm -hmm. I think what he realized is that, you know, there's a lot of people that um, either work at YouTube or, you know, work at these tech companies that are really politically towards the left. So now he's like this over the top alt left person. Right. Um, and, and he thinks that like, you know, I would assume he thinks that that's going to protect him online. And he might be right because, you know, recently we just seen him um, suggest publicly on YouTube. Ethan Klein said this. All right. He goes, um, somebody should bomb the NRA building, something along those uh, lines, which is an insane thing to say. I mean, you're calling for an, a terrorist attack right on U.S. soil and you're doing it on YouTube. So um, there's there's absolutely nothing worse you can do on YouTube. There is nothing worse. You know, some of these guys that are putting kids in danger, you know, the pedos or whatever you want to say it, right? 
you that that is bad as it is isn't worse than calling for somebody to do a terrorist attack where people get murdered um so i we've seen over the years and that's just one case right mm -hmm. we've seen over the years this guy um breaking tos tos uh terms of service nonstop, um and um there is some clear favoritism going on there's no other explanation for that um you can't do the worst thing on youtube and still have a youtube channel you just can't uh, now he had he did get a strike for that, but what's that like? You know, a strike like that's not a strikeable offense. That's the worst thing you can possibly do. So there there clearly is some favoritism uh, going on, and um, you know I don't know if it's politically related or what, but yeah, I hate that guy's guts, and uh, I wish him the worst. Is it is it scary for you to like think that? maybe someone's gonna get their way in a, in a certain way where like you are gonna get taken off of youtube is that a thought in your head or do you just know that you um you know i follow the rules i know what yeah. the rules are i follow the rules i try not to give anybody a reason to have me removed um and i watch all these people not follow the rules and no action taking place so you know it's no it doesn't I guess it is in, in my mind that I have to do the right thing and whatever and follow the rules. Um, because look, in, in 2020, YouTube came, took down one of my videos, and they basically told me that um, that I have to be in my best behavior. So I did. I listened to YouTube. You know, I love YouTube. I'm known as a YouTuber, right? Um, but I just want enforcement to be fair across the board. And you know, we're seeing in this Ackman um, story that's happening right now that there is not, there is not, you know, fair enforcement. I just made a Twitter video talking about this, you know, that, you know, Ackman got removed from the partnership program because he put out some tweets uh, jokingly saying that, you know, he's going to dock some YouTube employees or whatever. Uh, that was clearly a joke. He was... He was literally um, like mocking YouTube, if you will, uh, for not taking action on Quantum TV, doxing him, a fellow YouTuber doxing him. And he reported them and YouTube didn't do nothing. So he puts out this tweet joking that, oh, I guess it's totally fair. I guess it's totally fine that you can do that on YouTube. Um, and so YouTube responds by saying because of that tweet, that joke tweet of doxing YouTube employees, um, we're removing you from the partnership program uh, because we take the safety of YouTube employees so serious. Well, Ethan Klein made a call <laughs> for uh, somebody to bomb the NRA building, a call for a terrorist attack on U.S. soil. And I know for a fact that YouTube employees were in the building. We're in the building. Not only that, other YouTubers were in the building. And he gets just a strike. Like, it just – so – there there's favorite i forgot the question that you were asking am i afraid of getting banned no because i don't i don't do anything even remotely close to what this guy is doing mm -hmm. so no i'm not but do you also don't you also feel like if you did any anything slightly related to what he did that you would definitely have stronger actions taken against you i think i'm afraid that youtube hates me yeah, I think that's like my biggest fear is yeah. that they just hate my guts, they don't like me, and that someone's just gonna ban me just to ban me. I get, I think that's my fear, and I don't want them to hate me. I don't want them to hate me, um, because I love the platform. Um, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm just so different, you know, and my style of entertainment and my style of content is just, um. I don't know. I'm not a likable person online. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not Dan Keem online. I am Keemstar. And I, that I is could. Not... I could see where a lot of people wouldn't like you, but yeah. But it's gonna happen, and I think that. I think a lot of people, if they spoke what's in their mind, would, would be, exactly in the same position because, that's just how it is, and that's how. Not everyone's gonna agree with you and if you have a platform like you do and i'm not saying that i agree with everything you've ever said but like you would never agree with everything i've ever said so like obviously it's well, a human thing well okay i'm gonna give you an, a little example right yes youtuber tiktoker influencer he's making a twitter video or she he or she's making a twitter video 
Hi guys, how's it going? Da 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 da. Today we're gonna support this because da 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 da. I love you guys. I love you so much. That person is not free. That person is a prisoner to public opinion. That person is jailed. All right. They are not free. They cannot do and say whatever they want. All right. Mm -hmm. I can. <laughs> and so I think freedom is ultimately more important, right? Like you, I can do and say whatever I want. Um, I don't say messed up things, uh, because of rules. Um, but I don't really have a, a need to say messed up things. You know, mm -hmm. when I was saying messed up things in the past, it was like an entertainment thing, you know, like that was the, the, it was to entertain people, you know, to ham it up, but I don't really have a need to say messed up things. So mm -hmm. is it frustrating when a lot of people bring up past and try to try to use that? against you like your past bring up like um i'm so used to it i don't know it's been I'm it's been so it's genuinely it. been a thing for uh, as long as i can remember and like i i know exactly people still bring up the same thing from 2016 to 2022 it's the same it's the same thing that's always been and like i you know you, you understand it but at the same time it's like I think uh, I think a lot of it is like um, you said these horrible things. You did these horrible things. You know, you made this horrible joke. You made this edgy joke. Um, you do, I'm here to shame you and you don't deserve to be online. Mm -hmm. But um, I have won because I'm still online and you have lost. <laughs> so it's been this ongoing campaign where I'm just still here. I'm still existing and collecting W's and you're collecting L's. You collect L's in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, 2020, uh, 2021 and the full 2022. And it will be 2023, 2024. I'm sorry, I'm still here. I'm still existing. So I win. <laughs> you are a pretty from what I've seen, I think it's pretty good, but you are a pretty private person when it comes to your life. Like you, like people know the fact that like you have a daughter and we, I was a part of this. I bought some Girl Scout cookies, by the way. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, which I, I was just like, I mean, for one, Girl Scout cookies are awesome, but at the same time, it's like a great, I don't know, it warmed my heart that you tweeted that, that out. And, um, but yeah, it's like every, people know that you have a daughter, but like, like you kind of have to keep things private as being someone who a lot of people don't like and like if people knew where you lived or something like or do people know like have people found out yeah oh that's awful it's so, it's so funny when people tweet at me like my address or something they're like haha I, I know where you live it's like no shit like duh like i'm famous <laughs> <laughs> like anybody who is anyone who is famous people online know where you live there is yeah. no secret like yeah. you're not hiding it right so when you tweet at them they're like you know their address or whatever like what is that accomplishing like you're just one of like ten thousand other people that have the address too um so it's it's not annoying uh because it's just like so natural right um there are people online that have a hidden identity altogether. Like Dream is probably a prime example of those. Yeah. No one actually knows who Dream is. And the poor guy's not free. I, t I, I talked to Dream, you know, multiple times about this or Corpse Husband, right? Those guys are not free. Mm -hmm. Those guys are constantly afraid of people figuring out who they are. I'm not. Like, you know, uh, like it, the, I bought a house in. 2016 and within a week people were spamming the address of the house out like you know it's just it is what it is is there any level of fear or did you do you have like really upgraded like security or is did you just live every day with just like it is what it is we have all kinds of security measures you know i i don't want to go i mean i what i will say is cameras like the, yeah. obviously that's a yeah. big one everywhere but like um, we do have other measures in place um, that like it would be really, really hard for someone to do something. But we don't really we don't really fear this stuff. Um, and the reason why we don't is because I I just walk into a Walmart. Right. I just walk into a Target just like anyone else. And whenever and 
it's it's literally every time I go out, I get recognized. But when I do get recognized, there's no hate. You know, we're not on Twitter, bro. Like people yeah. are very nice. They're very kind. They're shocked. They want to take pictures. And um, that's just that's just the way it is. The things that happen online, that is not the real world. Right. Yeah, I think. uh uh, what is his name? Chappelle said it best. He said, um, Twitter's not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Twitter's not a real place or something like that. Like it's not, you know, the way people interact online is not how people interact in real life. Mm -hmm. Is, is m mom's basement. Did you guys, are you guys not doing that anymore? No, we ended that. I want to say like maybe two months ago. Um, both of us, I wanted to focus on the happy punch stuff. Um, Banks is focused on building some type of web 3.0 company. Um, so yeah, we kind of just was like, let, let's focus on these other things that we want to do. It kind of ran its course, um, you know, and, uh, and yeah, but I am working on a new podcast. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about that too. I, I love listening to the mom's basement. I love it. I love the dynamic between you and Banks. That was always so great was yeah um he's just i don't i've obviously never met him or anything but he just seems like such a like just he seems like a guy who is who he is on camera off camera and just like just like a super great guy yeah he is he is um do you got you got a time that you need to be done uh i got time for like maybe two more questions um okay uh i i've I've been, uh, I know you had Nuda doing drum alert for a while mm -hmm. and I've been a Nuda fan for a long time. Uh, was that, how was that doing, like giving someone else the reins, especially someone like him? Was it tough? Oh yeah. <laughs> I would scream at Nuda every day. I'm like, you're an idiot. This is bad. Why do it this way? Like, I would just scream at him, but you know because of the nonstop verbal abuse I gave it to Nuda when he did good, he really appreciated it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, just Nuda's just Nuda's Nuda, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's so weird. The fans just changed. Like at one point, the fans loved Nuda. They absolutely loved him to mm -hmm. death. And then uh, a year ago or something, we tried Nuda and they hated him. And it's just like, we, we constantly, uh, the audience the audience reaction is constantly changing to to different stuff um right now we have willie mack that covers for me when i go out of town or whatever um and it's like i personally think the guy does drum alert the way it needs to be done um and one day they'll love him the next day they'll hate him and demand keemstar back it's 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 weird yeah that's that's always something that was interesting was just what who who would be the right fit like would it be someone who's already established as a creator or would you want someone to come in and like underrated talent in your eyes um the problem with established creators even when they're small um is that they like they want to do their own thing they don't want to work for a company yeah they don't want to so it's like it's it's hard it's like it's hard to find good help right now in general at every job, not just the entertainment space, but like if I go to a Walmart or a Burger King or wherever around here, there's signs help want it. Have you noticed this? There's help yeah. want it yeah. at every, like something has happened to uh, Americans over the, ever since like COVID and shit, like people don't want to work. Or they go in and they're really entitled, so they don't want to, like... I remember when I had a job, like, um, like normal jobs, like, I would work my butt off, and I would just... My job was to make all my other employees look bad. <laughs> like, and I... Me look great, right? Like, I looked at it like... I look at, like, a video game, mm -hmm. right? I'm coming to fucking win this shit. My high score is going to be better than yours. And um, I don't know if that that that's really a thing anymore that people like want to want to do their job really good and want to impress the boss. I feel like 
uh, most people feel like their job sucks. This is stupid. They'd rather be doing other things. And um, part of the, the drive uh, is gone mm-hmm. for, um, for a lot of people. I mean, I noticed even like just like service jobs, right? You go into a subway or whatever. What do you want? Like just you bad customer service. Like, you know, people are rude. You go into a gas station and the attendance rude. It's just like, I think the culture is changing in a bad, bad way <laughs> across the board. And I, I, it's hard to find good employees, even at Drumler, which I would consider a dream job to host, host my show. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, last thing I would, if you could give me advice as a creator, as as maybe it's a general advice to creators or me specifically, what advice would you give for YouTube? When I did, um, when when we were making the trolling videos and whatnot on mm-hmm. um, in uh, the Federation of a hole gamers when we were doing that that um started in january of 2009 and at the time that type of content um which is like kind of like pranking and trolling in video games it didn't exist Mm -hmm. but because of it and because it was so successful and you know we had uh just shy of 300,000 subscribers and that in those days that's like the equivalent of like 25 million subs yes um because that was so successful it started an entire genre right uh of that type of content um so you know me and my group we were the trendsetters of that you know we started it uh when i created dramaler in 2012 there was no drama channels like the, that didn't exist there was no there wasn't even commentary channels that covered drama when i started dramaler so you know i created a whole nother genre on youtube so I guess my advice um, is that I played a big part in starting two entire genres of content on this platform. I say my advice is to do something that no one else is doing. Mm-hmm. You know, start the trend. Um, be the first one there. Right now, I've created Happy Punch, a social media boxing brand, but also like tied in to like a team we have a team we, we're bringing on fighters we send fighters no one has done that mm-hmm. no one we are first once again all right and i'm telling you right now there will be competitors other teams will be popping up left and right signing fighters uh but i am first so to be the first there to do something new that no one else has done and to start the trend is everything i love it i appreciate you so much for doing this um and I, you were you were actually it was such a delight to talk to you. You're so kind, and um, I can't wait to share this with the world. So I I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Texture. See uh-huh. you, man. Yeah.